five A10 mini macros I use most often. Hey there, live streamers. It's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I mean, live stream man. In this video, I'm sharing my five top macros that I use for the A10 mini switchers, and I'll give my fair warning up front. I don't use the A10 mini or mini pro anymore as my work has gotten more complex. I'm now using the A10 SDI Extreme ISO and Constellation 2ME the most, but I still own an A10 mini Extreme ISO, so my macros tend to be based around having some sort of additional output on top of my multi-view output. Let's dive right in. The first macro that I create is essentially a routing macro. It's to allow me to send various feeds to an external display. So let's say you've got a confidence monitor at the foot of the stage, and you wanna be able to quickly jump between sending a PowerPoint slide to it or sending a virtual Zoom guest. This is where the routing macro shines. You'll probably create multiple of them so that you can press one macro to send slides to the monitor, another macro to send the virtual Zoom guest to the monitor, and perhaps even a third one where you can send super source or program feed to the monitor. The ATEM has a few buttons on its keypad to do this, or you might have a stream deck. In my case, I have the ATEM Advanced 1ME control panel, so I can put my macros on buttons right on the panel. The second macro is what I call a transition macro. I have a client who likes to show three or four slides in a row when we go to a break in person and then hold on the last slide until we come back from that break. So I'll program this by loading in my three or four graphics into the media pool. Then I'll start my macro recording. For these purposes, I'll use media player two so I can still reserve media player one for anything else. With my macro recording, I'll drag in my first image to media player two take the image to program, then add a pause, typically for five or 10 seconds. Then I'll drag my second image into the Media Player 2 box. Add a pause again, drag image three into the Media Player box, add a pause, and finally drag image four into the Media Player 2 box. Now from here, I won't add a pause on the last one, so it cycled through all four images and now has landed on the final image. I can stop my macro recording, and now anytime I call up this macro, it will cycle through the four images, and then I'm ready to bring us back into the live stream, so I can simply press the auto button and fade to my wide shot. Alternatively, if you wanted the images to fade, you'd have to alternate putting the graphics in media players one and two. So you would hit record on your macro, drag image one into media player one, then you'd take media player one to program then drag image two into media player two. Add my pause because we're still on image one, and then select auto before taking media player two to program. From here, I'll add image three to media player one, add my pause for image number two, and take media player one to program. You see how we will need to use alternating media players to fade from image to image. The third macro that I like to use is to bring a lower third on screen using the downstream keyer, pausing for a set amount of time and then taking the lower third down. So for this one, I would record my macro, drag my lower third into media player one or two, depending on your preference, set the downstream keyer to use the media player one or two based on which one my image is in, and then I would take that keyer on air. Next, add a pause, and then finally take the keyer off air. This is a great macro if you have a small show with only a few lower thirds, so you can easily handle four to six lower thirds just with the macro keypad on the ATEM. You of course will need to write down notes as to whose lower third is on what macro, but that's easy to have on a paper at your tech table. The fourth macro that I use is a super source macro. Let's say that you have a super source with two boxes on screen and you wanna be able to swap between a layout that has two boxes side by side and two boxes where the one is bigger than the other. This might be used to switch between a virtual guest speaking and an in-person speaker in a double box side by side to an in-person speaker with their PowerPoint slides being in the larger box. For this macro, you need to start your recording, bring the proper graphics file into your super source and select whether it will be a background or a foreground image. From there, tell each box what its contents should be. So box one might be the speaker in the room, while box two might be the slides. 
Adjust your settings as needed on the X and Y axis to position each box where it needs to go, then stop your recording. From there, you'll record your second macro with a different graphic replacing your foreground or background in the super source. Tweak the position of each of your two boxes and again, stop the recording. Voila, now you have the ability to switch your super source up on the fly. The fifth and final macro is an audio macro, and I give credit to Photo Joseph on this one from a video that he did two years ago. He created a macro to fade your audio out over time, which is complicated because it requires a lot of pauses. Because of the way macros are recorded, if you drag the volume slider down on an ATEM slowly, the macro isn't recording what happens during the in-between time or the duration of the fade. It just records that the volume was at a certain point, and now it should be at this next point. This can cause a problem if you want a smooth fade because it would wind up being instantaneous. So to do a fade macro, I'll start by recording, drag my volume slider down just a little bit, add a pause, drag it down a little bit more, add a pause, drag it down a little more, so on and so forth. I'll take some time to perfect based on the pauses because you don't want it to pause for too long. Keep in mind, if you want a full one second fade out, you'll need to add enough pauses to match your frame rate. So if you're shooting in 24 frames, you'll need 24 pauses throughout the audio fade since each pause is set to one frame. Or if you set your pause to two frames, you can add 12 pauses throughout. Make sense? Macros are really helpful tools for live streamers because it allows you to press one button and complete multiple actions immediately, or in the case of using pauses over time. These are probably the five macros that I use the most, and I'm sure you've developed some of your own over time. Let me know down in the comments below what your macros are that you've made for your own productions, and hopefully we can share some trade secrets with others watching the video. Happy macroing!